Basically, for the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll uh, give a description of where Bar and Ray fit into the uh, Idol Nation. Now, Bar and Ray, I don't know if you know much about the company. Um, we're Scotland's oldest water treatment company. We specialise basically in two areas, uh, sports and leisure, and the area I get involved in, which is uh, water, wastewater and process. Uh, for example, Bar and Ray were involved in supplying all the swimming pools, training pools for the recent Olympics down in London. Um, today, uh, I'll give an overview of the actual company, uh, our approach to water and wastewater treatment. Uh, I'll summarise the sources of water in Scotland. Uh, we've uh, generated uh, decision trees uh, for the last 15 years since I started working with Bar and Ray. We've been approached by anything from a cottage, with a one bedroom cottage, uh, to uh, hotels with two or three hundred rooms. And they basically come to us with the remit of, we've got water, we can't drink it, can you make it potable? So that's the remit I've been working on for the last 15 years, and as you can appreciate, there's, there's some big challenges. Uh, we're going to go on to a case study, it's a recent job we did for University of Edinburgh, which is an outdoor centre at Furbush. Then I'll give you a further reference sites. Uh, I'm not going to go through the, the one or two hundred sites I've been working on for the last 15 years, but I'll give you a selected number of sites showing different technologies. And uh, the last slide, which is probably the most important, is where we feel Barn Ray, uh, an SME based in Scotland, fits into the Hydro Nation agenda. So, as I've as mentioned, Barn Ray, uh, over 50 years old, started off as a small shop selling pumps and filter equipment in Glasgow. Uh, recently moved to new premises in Hillington. Uh, we employ over 100 engineers. We basically do the full turnkey. We do from the initial design, consultation with the client, to the commissioning, installation, and after sales service. Like I said, we've got more than 200 references on the water and wastewater treatment side. Uh, we've got over a thousand references if you include uh, swimming pools uh, on the sports and leisure side. As you can appreciate, we're, we're a well, well established company. Recently opened an office in Hong Kong to serve the Chinese market, and we've got a well established office uh, in Dubai. This is basically our, our approach uh, when a client comes to us and with a water or a wastewater application, this is the way we like to approach to make sure that the correct system's installed. This is uh, generic as in the fact that we wouldn't use this all the time. Sometimes water is, is easy, it's just a matter of fil filtering it or putting a UV under the kitchen sink and there you go, you've got a portable supply. But more often than not, we get involved in uh, lab testing mainly applicable to wastewater or water recycling rather than uh, pure water. We also have, uh, which is affectionately known as the, the Barn Ray Burger Van, which is a, a mobile laboratory. Uh, basically, we, we roll this on, onto site and we can treat both water and wastewater. Uh, dirty water goes in and uh, clean water comes out the other end. Uh, in addition to the analysis, consultation and pilot work, we also get involved in the actual process design of the plant, which allows us to go on to the turnkey installation uh, and the, finally the, the commissioning. And we also have our own after sales service division to make sure the plants we install continue to work and produce quality water. I've listed there basically the areas I get involved in. Um, what, I'd say the water treatment side is probably about 70% of the business at the moment. We are also get involved in a lot of effluent and wastewater treatment. Uh, in addition uh, to that, we, we, we do basic pumping systems, filtration systems, and disinfection systems. Uh, I get involved in uh, the process side of it, but we also have a, what is classed as a water shop, really. So if you come to us, we can sell you just a pump, a, a boxed filter, or, 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 or a filter, or, or a UV. Like I said, our approach um, to any job really is to do the initial site investigation, discussions with the client and make sure we're putting the right system in. This often involves uh, laboratory work, 
sometimes involves uh, pilot studies to make sure the correct system is designed and installed. Uh, like I said, that's mainly on the, the water recovery and wastewater side. And then we go on to actually designing the system, installing the system, commissioning the system. Now, we, a summary of, of water supplies. Um, as you can appreciate, Scotland's got an abundance of water. Uh, the majority of systems we install uh, treat the first two, which is basically a surface, surface water supply, be it a stream or a lock or a, a local river, or a borehole spring or, or well supply. Very seldom get involved in it. We have done one actually, which is seawater sea desal, but obviously the energy required to produce portable water from seawater is not really applicable when there's such an abundance of surface water in Scotland. We've done a couple of rainwater harvesting systems. We did one down at the BBC, White City. Uh, and we've also done a recent one at a Carnegie Leisure Centre in Dunfermline, where as part of their environmental policy, they're about 20 to 50% of the water used to top up the pools and the showers is uh, natural rainwater. We also get involved in a recovery of uh, wastewater. Uh, normally, this is a uh, not very polluted water where a filtration, a simple, a simple biological system followed by a disinfection gives you a water that can be used as a grey water supply. Now what we've got on the next couple of slides is uh, looking at the, the main supplies of water which is basically the surface water and the well water is uh, the decision tree we normally go through to actually design the correct system for the client. Try and work your laser pointer. Initially, uh, any, m most supplies require uh, filtration, be it a stream, a uh, spring, a lock, or a, a, a groundwater. So we basically started with, a, with a, a basic filtration system to remove any particulates. And next, uh, again, this is applicable to stream supplies, uh, which are very seasonal and flashy. We, is there an organic problem and is it above the portable limit of 10 big uh, uh, platinum uh, cobalt units? Basically, if it's, not, it's not, a, not a problem, we can skip and go to the next step. If there is a color problem, we look at various techniques. Uh, we've established a, a couple of uh, novel techniques where we, we can remove color from, from water supplies using a resin activated carbon combination. Uh, sometimes we, we, we apply the technology which I, I believe is, a, is approved by, by Scottish Water, which is a membrane filtration, nanofiltration. Next, next we, uh, we implement a, a carbon filtration. Uh, again, different grades of carbon depending on what's actually in the water. This is mainly to remove organics, pesticides, taste, heavy metals, etc. The next main question is, is the water coming from a supply that's uh, susceptible to uh, cryptosporidium? If it is, you really need to put an approved system to remove cryptosporidium. Now, Barn Ray are working with Scottish Water at the moment on the trials which are going to commence in March Bank uh, Water Treatment Works uh, to establish the best technique to remove cryptosporidium. At the moment, we rely on using membrane filtration systems, which is a physical removal of the crypto. We've used the membranes, but we also have developed a system using a one micron approved, a DWI approved one micron absolute cartridge filter, which does, does, does a good job. It removes 99.987% of uh, crypto cysts. So it has been approved by DWI for, for portable water systems. Crypto, once the crypto is removed, the next step really is the disinfection, residual disinfection, and then it can go to the storage and dis distribution. Slightly different approach if the water is coming from the ground rather than the surface. Main issues being the pH. Normally, groundwater is pretty acidic, so if it's acidic, you need to bring the pH up. Uh, this range is flexible. I mean, I I've installed systems, and I know certain councils allow water down to 6.5, but we tend to go on the, on the alkaline neutral side. So 
we tr we're trying to, trying to get the, the water up to 7, 7.5. Again, simple chemistry. <laughs> Add acid or caustic, depending on the pH of the water. Next issue you normally get with groundwater, especially in Scotland, is uh, iron and manganese, which can be, a, can be a big issue, as you can appreciate. Precipitation of iron, rust, pipes, uh, and the downstream process is not, not desirable. So we've established a couple of techniques to remove iron and manganese. Normally, the levels we get, uh, or we see in Scotland, uh, simple aeration with or without chlorination, followed by a catalytic iron manganese filter normally does the trick. Next decision is once you've removed, adjusted the pH and removed the iron and manganese, are there any other parameters that require uh, treatment or removal before it can be used as a potable supply? If so, again we can have a second uh, or a third stage of treatment and again depending on what the parameters are that, re that reflects on uh, the filtration media we put into the third stage. Again, the next question is cryptosporidium. Not normally an issue with uh, well water because of obviously lack of contact with uh, sheep and various animal droppings. But again, you've got to ask the question and normally as a safeguard, we install a one absolute micron cartridge filter just as a safeguard from any risk of contamination. Again, following what we did on the, on the surface water, dis residual disinfectant followed by storage and then distribution. Now I've gone to a, a recent study, we've we, we recently installed the system at uh, Furbush Point which is an outdoor centre run by the University of Edinburgh, mainly for students but they do, uh, they do have these uh, bonding activity centres now for industry, uh, mountain biking, kayaking, canoeing, the usual activities. And as you can see from the, the map this is, this is Loch Tay, Killings down here, and there's virtually no water. I think the nearest water supply is a couple of, couple of miles in Killings, so they really had no choice to, but to treat uh, their own natural water supply. Um, and as you can see, there's, a, there's an abundance of water in Loch Tay, but their preference is to take it from a, a, local, a local stream. So what, what were the requirements uh, for the fir bush. Obviously, remote location, no chance of getting onto the Scottish water mains. It's got a variable population. I mean, uh, in winter, there's probably about four resident staff or uh, caretakers. In summer, it can be up to 50 or 100 people on their day courses or, or, or weekend overnights. The flora is, as you, can, as you can appreciate, mainly showers in the morning and water demand uh, between five and six o'clock at night. So the demand is very variable. Like I said, they've got two natural resources, uh, Loch Tay, which is on the, do on the doorstep, literally. And they've got the hillside stream. I mean, they, they tend to go for the hillside stream because they, they feel it's a, a cleaner supply. But unfortunately, it does, does tend to dry up in, in summer. So they needed Loch Tay as a backup supply. Uh, they, like, like any small community, they want a constant, reliable, and more, most importantly, it's got to be a potable water supply, so we can't have any risk of uh, crypto, for example, or any parameters that are out with uh, directive concentrations. Main problem with this site, or main challenge, I should say, is uh, removing the colour and having a safeguard against the uh, cryptosporidium. They also demanded a, a low, simple maintenance system, basically it's the, the bicycle repair guy who, who maintains the system, so with anything sophisticated like PLCs or programming or membrane type systems. And again, like all universities, look, running costs were, were very important. I won't go through the detail, but that's basically what we, what we came up with. Barry were employed, this it took about two years to get, get to the optimum design for this particular site. We were employed as consultants, um, uh, basically, we, we also were involved in ripping the old system out, which basically consisted of a, a basic chemical dosing system, a filter, a cartridge, and a UV. So we uh, did the design, we estimated the, 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 the approximate usage 
flow rates and also storage capacity of the system. So if I quickly go through what we installed, like I said, they've got two supplies, Locte, and they've got the stream supply, both of which are collected, uh, filtered using coarse bag filters, basically to, to remove frogs and fish and twigs and whatever else is in the water. And this goes into a combined untreated water tank. The idea was to use that during the, the months where there's actually w enough water in the stream, switch the pumps off and switch the pump, pumps on again in summer when this, this tends to dry up and use this as a backup. But in reality, the, those pumps are, switch, are on all the time. And what, what actually happens is you get 50-50 mix of stream water and lock water. Once it's in the res reservoir tank, this really is just as a flooded suction for the forward feed pumps. The feed pumps, due to standby operation, push it through the filtration uh, system. And what we've got is, uh, if you go back to the decision charts we I had on the previous slides, multimedia filtration to remove the suspended solids. We've got a, a Tanex, which is a resin type filter, which removes the or reduces the colour and the organics in the water, followed by an activated carbon system, which takes out any heavy metals, pesticides, or other organics in the, in the water. So basically coming out the other end, once it's gone through your one micron crypto filter, is a crystal clear portable water supply, which is stored in an uh, oversized, I'd, I feel, a 20 cubic meter storage tank. From there, we've got duty standby pressure pumps, which pump it to the facility and the uh, remote cottages. And so that's serving all, all the demands of the actual uh, outdoor center. Prior to it going to its destination, we're adding chlorine dioxide, which w we feel is a, is a better disinfectant than the standard hypochlorite, in, especially in this application. Uh, so we're dosing uh, chlorine dioxide into the storage tank, keeping the storage tank sterile. And also we're, we're, we've got a, a boost type system, so if the levels in there drop, for example, the water supply not being used over the weekend or winter months, we've got a boost system which basically tops up the level to a safe level, uh, allowing the water to be used as a portable supply. So, Barn Ray, like I said, were engaged, engaged by uh, University of Edinburgh. We put a system in removes crypto using the one micron filter, suspended solids, heavy metals, removing the color. We've got a pesticide removal, turbidity reduction and disinfection. So overall, it was quite a complex system because you had two variable water supplies and there were a fair number of parameters in that that needed to be reduced to give a portable supply. We also in, in, included a, a large, like I said, a 20, 20 ton, 20 cubic meter balance tank which gives the, uh, even at peak demand, that's a two-day supply. We use chlorine dioxide as a disinfection uh, rather than the, the hypochlorite usually used. And we supplied a, a reliable low-maintenance system. It, it's got whistles and bells, it's got alarms on it uh, <coughs> to alert them for any, any blockages or filters, but the system's been running for almost a year now and we've never had any downtime and estimated cost, it's actually a wee bit less than that, but it's, it's around uh, three pence per cubic meter. So just looking at the third bush is a recent example, but we also get involved in various other systems. This is just a, a few recent projects I've been involved in. Uh, Locks and Glens group, we've done three of their hotels uh, using both boral water and stream water. We've done a fair bit of work with uh, NHS Scotland where they're actually using a potable water supply but they need to reduce the levels of debris uh, or filtration down to 5 and 0.5 micron to stop accumulation of debris in the pipes which causes pitting and uh, pipe failure in the water distribution system. We've done a fair bit of work with Scottish Power, uh, the Galloway Hydro Scheme, uh, Galloway Forest. Uh, again, they, they're using, um, I think it was called the black water, so you can appreciate the, the colour of the water we had to treat, which is a local stream. Uh, main aspect there was colour removal, 
which allowed us to use UV as a disinfectant. Obviously, you need to rip the colour out before you can use uh, UV as your, as your main disinfectant. Don't work at Storbo Castle. Again, they had a, a similar problem. They had a, a stream supply, which was the colour of cold tea most of the time. We put a sand filtration and colour removal system in. And I don't know if anybody's actually been to Storbo Castle, but the water is, is pretty clear. Did, did the uh, borehole system at uh, Diageo, which was, uh, I think it's the newest whiskey distillery in Scotland, uh, that's a 100 cubic metre per hour uh, well uh, water system we're, we're treating there. Again, mainly to remove the iron and manganese. Uh, we've, we put a softener on as well to allow the, portable, allow the treated water to be used in, in, a, in the boilers. And we've done work at Area Water. We did work at your life sciences. Uh, John, your building basically to treat water, remove chlorine from a portable water supply, which was high in chlorine and THMs, allowing it to be used for the, the fish, fish breeding. So where, where does Barn Ray um, fit into the hydro nation agenda? Now, I've basically summarised... Um, the point here. I mean, the, the fact that we we are based in Scotland, we've always been based in Scotland. We're owned um, by the people actually working for the company, and we are Scot Scotland's oldest uh, water treatment company. We've got the experience not only in the the water and wastewater treatment side with the references and the 50-year pedigree, but we've also got this experience we could export throughout the globe. Uh, there's nothing unique with um, water in Scotland. Um, apart from the fact we've got, we've got a lot of it, but if you can treat water in Scotland uh, as a, a, and produce a portable water supply, there's no reason why you can't do this anywhere in the globe as long as there's a, a supply, a constant supply. Like I said, we, we, go, we really fall back on our references. Um, we've got references in all different industries and we've also got uh, references for different types of water from the desal plants, uh, well water and surface water treatment like I've just described. And where I think we could assist with the hydro nation is um, our commercial knowledge. Because everything I do, it's got to have a payback. I can't just go out and assist somebody uh, treating the water unless uh, you know, I can satisfy the directors and uh, we, we know we're going to get paid for it and, and make a reasonable profit on it. So I think combined, uh, with the, ex the experience we've got, the reference we've got, we can make a good contribution as a small S SME based in Scotland to the Hydro Nation agenda. That's me.